yeah, they do speak English. They were able to understand me and I was able to understand some of the things that they would say as well, just because I know poquito espanol. So yeah, did I, did I say that right, y'all? A little Spanish? Yo, yo hable, yo hable espanol. No, I don't speak Spanish. Um, yeah, whatever. We're gonna, yeah, hopefully I said that right. welcome back to my youtube channel so look don't judge me i know i'm late with this one so this video is going to be the q a about puerto rico i'm going to answer all you guys' questions throw in some additional questions that i think you guys might have about puerto rico this is not a sponsored video so i'm not going to be dropping any links to anything but i will definitely insert footage so you guys can get like the full picture of stuff that I'm talking about from my actual trip. In case you did not watch the Puerto Rico vlog, you can go ahead and check that out. I'll attach it here. Um, and yeah, let's go ahead and jump into it. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you're not new here, thank you for coming back to watch another video. Thank you for all the love, that you, your continuous love and support. I appreciate you. So, all right, so I'm gonna have my phone because I'm gonna be looking at questions that um you guys asked me so first question said do the people speak english and did they understand you so yes majority of the people in puerto rico do speak english the people at the front desk at the hotel spoke english some of the uber drivers do not speak english but i would say that they speak like like the bare minimum like hello goodbye you know like the basic english they know basic english words and if they don't speak English, majority of the times they're not gonna talk to you during your Uber ride. So, I mean, that solves that. So there's no communication error there. And also, like when you order your Ubers, if the person does not speak English, Uber automatically translates it to whatever their native language is. So like for me, when I was riding my Uber drivers trying to tell them my location, it was automatically converting it to Spanish for those that do not speak English. And then whenever they would write something that was in Spanish, I'm assuming it was automatically translating it into English for me. And the only reason I assume that is because like they, there's like little pop-ups that tell you like your Uber driver does not speak English and things of that nature. So with that being said, I'm assuming that it automatically did the translation for you. So that is one thing to keep in mind. You don't really have to worry about the, the language barrier in Puerto Rico because at the restaurants or places that you go, there's going to be majority of the people there are going to speak English. Like they just have to, it's a, you know, touristy spot. So yeah, they do speak English. They were able to understand me and I was able to understand some of the things that they would say as well, just cause I know poquito Espanol. So yeah, did I, did I say that right? Yeah. A little Spanish. Yo, yo hable, yo hable Espanol. No, I don't speak Spanish. Um, yeah whatever We're gonna, yeah hopefully i said that right i don't know i really want to learn spanish i was actually in school for it at uh one of them brookhaven community colleges like a year ago or whatever and then i stopped going um anyways next question how was the food food <sighs> moment of silence so the first place we actually had food at was the hotel and it was like the rooftop bar because i don't know if you guys remember like we were supposed to catch an uber to this one restaurant let me get the name of it for you because i have everything written down so we were supposed to catch an uber to kikita beach like i had reservations set up for us and everything it was literally like the day we flew in but <sighs> When we got there, the Uber ride was, I mean, the Uber was hitting for like almost a hundred and something dollars, anywhere between like 80 and a hundred something dollars. And like I said, on my um, Puerto Rican blog, AD was like, he didn't care. Like, let's just go ahead and pay it and go. But I was like, hell no, nah. like they tripping. That's a lot of money. I'm not paying no 80 to not a hundred dollars or whatever. I'm not going to let him pay that for us to go out to eat when we had a restaurant or at least bar food or whatever 
upstairs. So we ended up going upstairs, but that food was trash, bro. Like we should have just, I mean, I don't have regrets about not paying that Uber, but I wish we would have chosen a different restaurant for our first night there. So yeah, that was that. The hotel food, I would probably stay away from unless you stay somewhere like, um, you know, like a higher end Vander, uh, Condondo Vanderbilt or whatever hotel. Like they have STK, which is a restaurant that we ended up going to the last day for his like little birthday dinner and their food their steak ugh, bomb their food was bomb um so stk did have good food and musa oh my god musa is a brunch spot that had really good food okay I feel like I'm boosting it because we only tried one thing, but the one thing that we tried, like we we got it to be an appetizer, but it ended up being really filling for the both of us. So we ended up not getting anything else, but it was so good. Oh my God, that food was so good. So highly recommend Musa. And then what else? So I said Musa STK. Oh, I saw another spot called Choco Bar Cortez. And it's in Old San Juan. It's like a little place where like everything is chocolate related and like little um it's like a i don't want to say it's like a dessert place but it just seems like they incorporate chocolate into their food um somehow and so i wanted to go there as well but it was closed on the day we went to old san juan so we couldn't go there but that's another place that i did my research on and i will go ahead and recommend just based off of the reviews that i read the stars that they have and um the pictures that i saw it looked like it was going to be dope so ESH Brunch Beach Club. I think ESH, I have that written down. Again, I didn't get to go because look, our trip was so fast and I know it's probably stupid for me to be recommending all these places I didn't go, but I'm just gonna give you guys places that I wanted to go based on the research that I had done. And like I said, the reviews I read, the number of stars the places had. So ESH Brunch Club, I think is located at one of the hotels. I wanna say it might be located at hotel vanderbilt and then they have like a little area um and like a little restaurant or whatever and i think it's called esh um brunch beach club and i watched a girl's vlog and that place seemed like it was really cool to go so that's another place that i'm recommending and then what else let's see oh one more no two more in Canto Beach Club Bar and Grill, I don't really like off the top of my head, I have it written down, but I don't really remember much of like why I wrote that down or why I wanted to go there. So if you want to go there, you can check it out. If you don't, hey. But the other one I do have down is Eater, E-T-E-R, Rooftop and Lounge. That place looks super cute. It looks kind of like small, like kind of cozy. But that was somewhere else that I wanted to go. But I figured, okay, it's a rooftop lounge. Well, if we have a rooftop lounge or bar on top of our hotel, then why do I need to go to another one? Like, why am I going to go travel to another one? So that's the reason we didn't go there. But they did have good reviews. But the food looked like, eh, like I don't know. Like, eh, the food looks suspect, honestly. But if you want to try it out, you can. Next question did i see any of your cousins no isaiah i didn't see any of your cousins <laughs> things to do so again hard trip so we went to puerto rico we flew in like friday early friday i want to say we got in at like 3 p.m wow we left sunday like i think we came back we got back to dallas at like i think we left at like nine we got back to dallas at one so it seemed like it was when we were planning we thought okay this will be a perfect amount of time but in actuality it was not so again during my research and planning phase i had a ton of things that i had planned out that i wanted to do so one of them sorry again i'm looking down at my phone because i have everything written in my phone so one of them we did get to do which was a zip line so it's called rainforest zipline park you're pretty much ziplining through el yunque I, I think that's how you say it it's the el yunque yunque um rainforest and it is so pretty you guys like the views there the this like it just gives me a real 
like i just felt like i was immersed in it it was so gorgeous i was literally blown away when we got to the top of that hill and like just looking down at everything so dope um about the like actual activity you pretty much start off they start you off on like these little baby zip lines where you're you know a couple feet or whatever um off the ground or whatnot but then it's like as that you go from one you're kind of just going up up and up and to higher level zip lines and so to get some of those to those higher level zip lines you're literally like climbing these tall ladders i wish i had footage of that but i don't but you're like climbing these tall tall ladders to get to the top of you know where you're gonna zip line down and so man say like the ladders that was killing your girl like i'm out of shape i'm not gonna lie i don't work out um so it was a little tough but um and it was a little tough on ad too because he smoked so he was over there like whoa shit not only does he smoke he also is afraid of heights which is so weird because he's the one that really wanted to go zip lining so don't ask me how that works but yeah it was killing us to get up these to these um get up these ladders or whatever but we made it obviously um on one of the zip lines like the longest one which i think was like twenty eight thousand, or i'm sorry 2800 meters long um he got stuck at the end or whatever and had to like climb his little way back to the front <laughs> i'm sorry it's still funny to me just because i'm like how your little ass gets how my little ass didn't get stuck but you got stuck you way more than me so i don't know but and then he was closing his eyes on the zip line like bro this this was for you buddy like anyways but yeah so the zip lining place i highly recommend that place it was dope the people were friendly very like i don't know they it was just it was a good experience i, I don't really have any complaints about it we also wanted to do like ATVing, but everything was booked up. The timing of when we went was like, I would say into spring break time. And also I think I want to say it was like around the time of pride or something like that. So like a lot of things, like we, we noticed, um, like just a lot of things were booked up. ATVs, jet skis, any water activities, boat, you know, like boat ventures, like all of those things were booked up. So yeah unfortunately we didn't get to do the atv but we wanted to so i would recommend atv just because it's fun like have you ever done atv anywhere i mean if you have then you know what's probably fun i don't think i've ever atv no not to my knowledge but it's something that i've always wanted to do so i'm gonna add that to my bucket list um and i need to check that off next time i go somewhere so yeah atv oh there's this one boat place that looks so dope like it's like a um like a sail adventure or whatever where you're sailing from i think like somewhere in puerto rico to another location and the but where they take you this private island or whatever looks fire i'll insert now that one i will insert the little trip advisor a screenshot of the trip advisor just so you guys can see what i'm talking about but like this place oh my god like honestly i'm so sad that we did not get to do this because again, it was booked up. So what I am going to say is as a disclaimer, make sure that you book all of your activities well in advance. Don't be last minute like us. Like we literally even booked our trip. Maybe I'll say we booked our trip maybe a week or so before we actually went. So don't be like us. If you are, or if you book that far in advance, at least try to go ahead and book your activities at the time and don't wait to the last minute. Hopefully they're available. It also might be smart to look at activities that you want to do and then see what dates are available and plan your trip around that if your purpose of going to Puerto Rico is to do activities or excursions, I should say. So yeah, let's see another question. Oh no, something else we did was the renting the cabana. So Condando Beach Club, which their rooms are badass, right? Their rooms are dope. Um, oh, let me tell you the story about Condando Beach Club. So because my next question is about where to stay anyway. So, Condado Beach Club, beautiful looking rooms or whatever, right? A little bit more on the expensive side. Cool, whatever. So, originally, I booked a hotel. And I'll talk about that in a second when I discuss the hotels. And then, I booked one hotel, but then I came across Condado Beach Club. So, I was like, ooh, 
let's go ahead and stay here plus one of the things to do at condondo beach club is to get like a cabana rental and i think the cabana rentals are like i think it's like 250 for like a six person one and then like 350 or something like that for like a one that holds eight or more people i can't remember it's something like that um but yeah so we were we already had purchased our day pass to go there for a cabana rental and so i was like well let's just stay there so that that way on sunday when we go to do the day pass we just have to walk downstairs we don't actually have to like travel to the location so i booked that hotel too the day that i was about to go in and cancel my other hotel i called the hotel and what did i call them for i called the hotel to see about something honestly it, I, i'm sorry my memory is shot i can't remember what i called them for but the person that answered the phone and i talked to at condondo beach club was rude and then literally right after i got off the phone with them i got an email that said my reservation was canceled so i was like what the f for what like why is my reservation canceled so to me i'm like buddy pulled up my hotel or my reservation and he must have canceled it by accident or i don't know i'm like why did he cancel it um so i called back to figure out why my hotel had been canceled thankfully i didn't cancel the other hotel we had originally booked but anyway so i called back to be like okay so why was my hotel room canceled or whatever and he pretty much said that it was declined by my credit card company so i'm like what like it wasn't declined when i made the transaction so he pretty much said like you're gonna have to call your credit card company and approve any purchases for puerto rico otherwise they're gonna keep rejecting them bro i was pissed let me and then i was pissed because i had got a phone call from my credit union but it did not say credit union it said spam likely so if it says spam likely i'm not gonna answer the phone but I noticed that I had this long voicemail that was like da, 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 something something about Credit Union of Texas might see fraudulent activity on your account. Da, 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 da. But I ignored it because again it said scam likely and you know all them damn stupid warranty car warranty vehicle whatever phone calls we've been getting lately on top of people just out here like you know doing all this little scamming shit. I just didn't even pay it any attention. I literally thought like okay this is probably not legit. I didn't. I, I, I just didn't think that it was legit so i ignored it but it turns out that they i guess they were calling to authenticate the charge but because i didn't answer and they didn't hear from me then i guess they went ahead and rejected it so that's my hotel ended up getting canceled the dude had no sympathy at all i'm like he was like well you're gonna have to try to rebook it or whatever and you're gonna have to book it at whatever the new rate is so i was like this mother okay bet so I went to try to rebook and it was higher than what it was the first time. So I was like, nah, fuck that. Y'all are y'all already getting some money out of us for this cabana rental. You're not getting no more money. And the dude was not friendly. Had he been like, okay, you know what? We'll go ahead and match. We understand this happens all the time. I'll match the price of what it was before. No worries. We'll take care of it. Then I would have went and booked with them. But dude was like, nah, you got to book it at the new cost. So I'm like, okay, well, well, I'll just keep my money over here where it was. And so but about the the actual cabana rental you get like this <sighs> when we pulled up to the cabana place i'm filming or whatever on my little um dj dji or whatever and the security dude walks up to me and he says i'm gonna insert it here so y'all can see what he says can I help you guys? Oh, you're here? I got a cabana. I got a cabana. Okay. I, I go that way. Try not to be filming stuff that's going to go on, the, on social media because of the pandemic. You know, they can set us. <sighs> Sir, do you think that people are just not going to have their phones out here and everything? Like, what? Come on now. You really think that, like, I can't even believe he said this to me. I'm just like, boy, bye, or whatever. I did stop filming just because whatever, like just trying to be respectful, let him know, like I'm not trying to get your establishment shut down. But if you realistically think that people are not going to be recording or snapping or whatever, that's how y'all are getting business is because people are recording and doing all this shit. So I'm like, 
sir anyways i kept filming later on as you can see so that kind of was like eh, like i get it if you shouldn't be doing it i don't know i don't know what do y'all think about that like am i overthinking it am i like did i do the right thing by stop recording i don't know i just thought that that was kind of weird it was like okay dude like but y'all have this whole event going so anyways um we get there and it's so loud or whatever so i'm trying to go back and forth with like the bartenders and all of them like telling them like hey because they already gave us our little wristbands once we checked in and so i'm like hey we have a cabana rental here or whatever and they keep telling me like oh no they're already sold out da, 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 woo, woo. and i'm like no i have a cabana rental or whatever and i'm like trying to get them to under like i'm trying to you know yell or whatever because like i said it's so loud they have a live dj all of that which is dope so i'm trying to get them to understand like no i have a rental already so finally get that situated we look over the cabanas like all of them are are indeed full so they literally had to like go over there move some people out the way just for us to be able to get our cabana so it was like but we did get there late i'll give them i'll give them that the rental was from like 11 a.m to 6 p.m and we got there like four so i mean i it's understandable and i don't have an issue um with that but maybe next time they just have it kind of because if you go to the clubs out here they're gonna have a reserved sign up and you're not gonna be able to really just be in that section or am i lying they might i don't know anyways they cleared it out for us and we were able to go over there we met some really cool girls or whatever that now i'm friends with on instagram so shout out to them they were fun um and their energy was vibrant they were from brooklyn i think it was and a one, she was a teacher and she was a special education teacher so we just we were like boom, boom, we just was clicking um so yeah but it was just me and him we got a bottle we got um a bottle of um don julio whatever the 1942 or whatever which i actually still have let me go grab it okay so this is the bottle that we actually got in puerto rico right so we had got the don julio or whatever and you know normally don julio retails for probably what like a little bit over a hundred and something not a little bit probably a hundred maybe two hundred dollars at the max i don't know i've never purchased it i just know the casa azul is like 130 so i know that don julio or is in there comparison wise man say ad paid five hundred and something dollars for that bottle for us to get bottle service yeah i think it was like five something all i know is i want to say at the end when we left that the tab was like 900 and something dollars so i don't know it was like nine i think it was 900 and something dollars let me i'm about to call him and ask him real quick but hey, real quick how much was the tab at um condondo ocean club okay the bottle was five something right or was it more yeah. five. how the hell did we spend that and then the gratuity yeah, yeah. she got like a hundred and some dollars or something like that in gratuity yeah, like 122. in gratuity Oh, okay yeah all right i'm filming my, uh the q a for puerto rico so that's what i wanted to know thank you okay bye so yeah so imagine paying 900 and something dollars just for the cabana rental and the bottle or whatever of your choice and all that on top of you already giving them like 1800 plus dollars for the room yeah they wasn't getting the rest of my money but so anyways um so yeah that's about condondo ocean club view was nice um we didn't get to get in the pool we didn't even really get to go like beachfront because we were out of there like by the time it was like time to kind of like start shutting down or not even shutting down because it's not like it ended at six but they didn't kick us out or anything we had dinner reservations at like eight or nine or something like that so we had to leave so we didn't really get to enjoy like the beachfront area or anything um but yeah i 
I would definitely recommend getting the Cabana at Condado Beach Club because it was lit. Like the people were fun. Everybody was enjoying themselves. They were dancing. They were having a blast. So I honestly would recommend them for that piece. For staying there, yeah, I mean, honestly, I probably would recommend staying there because the room does look dope as hell. Like the, just check them out. Old San Juan is somewhere else that we did go. And it was so dope because like going to Old San Juan was like literally just like diving into the culture. Like the food trucks and I got like churros and you know different things like that and so it was like that was dope and you got to see like the people out there playing their music you got to see like the older generation they were out there dancing yo it was just so dope like it was a vibe and AD was in love and I just I loved seeing how excited he was about everything and like how he felt like he just he was like so amazed by it so i re definitely recommend going to old san juan um and just being able to you know get that vibe that they have out there and that energy that they have out there it's just very like i don't know it just felt like i felt like i was a part of something when i was out there and they do have a lot of souvenir shops so you can pick up a lot of your little tidbits from old san juan um, now on to where did we actually stay? So we stayed at the AC Hotel Marriott or whatever. I always stay at Marriott. Um, oh my dogs. I always stay at Marriott hotels or resorts because I'm a Marriott member and I be finessing with my military discount. But this time I didn't get a military discount, but I still got some points, of course, for staying with Marriott. I think our hotel room was, it was over a thousand or something dollars too for the three nights. Um, and the room was okay. When I was reading the description of the room, it said it was like, I want to say like two to 300 something square feet. But when you walked in, it was very like open and spacious. And so I was really surprised. And I was like, okay, well, I actually don't mind the size of, of the room. Like it wasn't bad at all. I liked the view could have been better. Like it is located. It's not a beachfront property. So it's like located kind of like in the midst of Con Condado or whatnot. So from our balcony you got to see like a lot of buildings and things of that nature and you could kind of see like the ocean like back over there in the corner or whatnot so the the view was like okay it wasn't horrible but it definitely could have been way better like our view in mexico was whoo fire so i would have appreciated a view like that but it's cool oh uh, let me tell y'all about the hotel though that we did stay at i kind of got to reposition myself sitting on this little stool is uncomfortable so we get to our hotel we try to check in and also i'm a, i'll touch on some of the processes that you have to go through or whatever we get to our hotel we try to check in they have no rooms available mind you check-in is at four o'clock i had already checked in like earlier like because they let you check in mobile you know through the mobile through the app or whatnot so i had already checked in to let them know we were going to be on our way i let them know our arrival time all of that so we get there check in it's four something there's it's after four there's still no rooms available so we end up just they try to give you like two free little vouchers like two drink vouchers welcome drinks or whatever vouchers i guess to kind of compensate for the time or the inconvenience whatever so anyways we catch an uber to um the mall of san juan just to kind of waste some time ad had been wanting to do some shopping anyways so it was cool we let the hotel hold our bags hopped in an uber went to the mall as y'all may or may not have saw in my video the mall ended up being closed because it was good friday but the restaurants were open so we chilled there got some shots and chilled until our next uber came to pick us back up when we hopped in the uber i would say it was about 15 to 20 minutes or so after we got in the uber that i did get a phone call saying that they had a room available so it kind of did suck that we left because we wasted money already going to the mall because the mall was closed and then it didn't really take them that long for um to get our room ready but i just still feel like if i'm paying to check in at four you should let me check in at four or have a room available for me when i get there um especially when you allow me to check in early like i want to say i checked in either the previous day or like i checked in the previous day to let them know what time we were going to be there and they still didn't have rooms available so that was kind of like frustrating but again we did go during a busy time so i can see why they didn't right let me be fair so the other thing was is 
when you first walk in, like I said, the room is, it looks nice. It looks very well put together. But I noticed that like our, I think I had stains on my pillowcase and stains on my sheets or on our sheets. And so I noticed it kind of like later on in the evening or whatever. It was like, it was probably after we came back from the bar that night I noticed it. So I was just like, whatever, it's late let me just go to sleep or whatever i always travel with my own blanket anyway so i'm like okay cool whatever i reach out to customer service through the mobile app because that's just a convenient way to get in contact with them and i let them know like hey our sheets are dirty when they do housekeeping today can they you know replace the sheets or whatever And they're like we apologize for that we will get it done yada yada pause let me also talk about housekeeping so when you check into the hotel, if you've traveled during COVID at all, you may have noticed that housekeeping is like way different than what it used to be. They're not going to come in your hotel room every day and clean your room to the T like they used to. They like some hotels won't come in your room at all. Your room just has to stay dirty. Like I want to say when we were in Denver um, for my dad's funeral, they didn't come in our room at all. Here, when you check in, they do ask you, do you want like tidy up service or do you not want anything or like what's your preference on you know the, the the options the housekeeping options so i selected the option for the tidy up service like yeah i want you to come in i want you to replenish the towels i want you to make up the bed i want you to straighten up like yeah that's that's the perk of staying in a hotel right is to come into your new fresh room every day after you leave or whatever so i that's the option that i selected now fast forward to back to the point of i've already contacted them i let them know that the sheets were dirty they apologize said they will get it taken care of when they come in to do housekeeping right so we leave we go walking around we went and walked around um and housekeeping was moving at this time they were they were cleaning up so we're going we're walking around condado um and when we get back to our hotel our room hadn't been touched i mean they might have put new towels in there, but that was it. It looked like their room had not been touched. So now I'm a little bit aggravated because it's like we left so y'all could come do housekeeping and do your job. And then y'all didn't do shit. So, so reach out to them again. Y'all didn't clean the room. We still got these dirty sheets in here. No, you know, this, this, and that, or whatever. Like, what's the deal? So they, of course, apologize, whatever, again they'll get it taken care of so we leave go to the rainforest go do that little tidbit or whatever when we get back from the rainforest room is clean sheets still dirty still the same dirty sheets they just folded them or whatever like you can still see the same stain in the same spots on the pillowcase and the sheets so now i'm really like you know what like y'all are sorry for real so reach out to the, them again. Hey, y'all didn't y'all clean the room, but y'all still left these dirty ass sheets in here. So and I don't talk to them like that. Yes, I curse. Right. But I don't like curse at um, people like who are providing me a service or anything like that. Like that's just not me because, yeah, I just wouldn't want nobody talking to me like that. So these are just these are my thoughts. Right. This is what I, I'm saying to myself. So anyways, um go and uh so they finally stay they're like okay apologize and of course again they send somebody they send a guy or whatever he comes but he literally only comes with the comforter like the duvet or whatever like no fresh sheets no i'm like oh my god what is wrong with y'all why are y'all just not replacing all of the bedding like i'm so confused but whatever at this point i don't even have time to keep fussing at them so i let them do their thing he didn't know what he was doing he didn't even, he barely knew how to make the bed. Somebody else came in there and helped him. Whatever, fine, squash it. I'm over with now. But I just say that to say that the AC, y'all let me down with that. And I did let them know when they ended up giving me like 16,000 um, extra points or whatever, which is like, okay. But I would have rather y'all took some money off my bill. I'm just saying. I'm pretty sure most people would have preferred money off a bill than some points because I'm all about immediate satisfaction and so that would have made me happy immediately versus me getting these 16,000 points and still having to add those points up with other stays to get more points just to be able to get a free stay. Yeah, no, nah. give me that money next time. So anyways, yeah, so that's my, that's our experience at our hotel, the AC Marriott Condondo Beach. 
about the area. Condado Beach is like more of like a busy touristy area. I would say it kind of reminds me of like that strip on Miami of like on South Beach between like first and 10th and ocean and washington and collins all of that little area because it's more like busy you see more people out walking around with their drinks they're eating or whatever um but it just is missing like in miami on ocean drive you're on the ocean front and on condondo beach you're like the ocean front was beyond the hotels i should say so if that makes sense i would have preferred to kind of be like right on the ocean so i mean i recommend Condondo, the Condondo area for more of like the touristy feel or like if you want to go shopping because they have like they had some little um I mean did they have a lot I feel like they have like kind of minimal souvenir shops old San Juan had more but not a whole lot um but like I said it's just more of like a little party area is what I will say now there is Las Mujeres, I think, is another area that you can stay in. I think Las Mujeres and, like, going toward Old San Juan area, I think those two are both, like, more quieter areas to stay in. Like, more resort, like, pure bliss, kind of just chill, relaxed vibes. Um, and Condondo, like I said, is very much active. For those of y'all that want to be a little bit more active want to be more on the in the mix of things so all right procedures to go to puerto rico that's huge so two things that you have to do so before you can arrive in puerto rico you have to have a negative COVID test so you have to get tested no more than 72 hours prior to your arrival so I was kind of stressed out about this. I thought it was going to be a huge deal. It really didn't seem like it was a huge deal once we got there as far as like the verification process. But yeah, if you're trying to go to Puerto Rico, you have to have the negative COVID test within the last 72 hours. You also have to fill out this form because you'll get like this little QR code that you have to show upon trying to exit the airport. And it's pretty much just verifying, you know, where you're staying, your name, your contact information. They're pretty much trying to do like contact tracing and, you know, just monitor to make sure that you don't have any symptoms while you're there. And if you do, you know, being able to like isolate you or whatever, or quarantine you in case they need to they ask you where you stay. Like I think back in the U.S., um... They ask you like your flight information and then they give you like a little QR code that they will scan at the airport and they will text you every single day while you're in Puerto Rico. Let me see if I saw the text messages so y'all can see what I'm talking about. So they send you this like text message every day. Literally, you see I had to put stop. So they send you this message every day and it's pretty much just like, oh, it's a daily report. Are you experiencing this symptom, this symptom, blah, 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 blah. Are you experiencing any of these symptoms? Please reply yes or no. And so like every day you have to respond back and say like, no, 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 or whatever. I don't know what happens if you say yes. Obviously, they're probably going to come track you down and find you and make sure that you quarantine. But I didn't have those issues. And they were still texting me after I left. So I had to I had to uh, text back stop so they would stop sending me messages and finally they stopped sending me the messages. Now I don't know what's going to happen when I go back to Puerto Rico. Um, maybe they'll just re, you know, put me in because it said by me putting stop, it says I'm blocking all texts from this number. So I don't know what's going to happen when I go back to Puerto Rico, but I still kept the messages in case I go back because it just says to text unstop and then I can go back to receiving messages from there. The form that you fill out to get into Puerto Rico is very similar to another form that they also make you fill out when you check when you're checking in your hotel. So AD had to like fill out this form for us when we got there and it pretty much just asks the same things like our information, our flight information, our name, like we're um like our address, I think it was, like are we experiencing any um covid like symptoms? or whatever very redundant like i said very similar to what you had to already fill out to even get into puerto rico so those are some things that you can anticipate having to do when you are trying to travel to puerto rico other than that safety wise with covid i will say that they are taking the same measures that we're taking here which is like um wearing masks they're very strict about masks they are very strict about sanitizing. Like, I feel like in the U.S., they're like, eh, you know. But in Puerto Rico, they did not play. Like, 
they had like they the way they had their the temperature be taken like and you took it in every store you went to it was a i don't know how to what to describe it as but it was one of the ones that you put your hand in front of and then the hand would take your temperature or whatever and they literally had this at like every place you went to i mean stores in the mall cvs in on the corner or whatever everywhere that you went to um and i think at the restaurant they physically did it with like a little thermometer or whatnot but um everywhere else was like hand put your hand up it'll tell you your temperature and then right below it is like the hand sanitizing station so they they did not play and they were very on top of their um you know their precautions and their their uh COVID-19 um restrictions um other than that I think that is it I hope I answered all of your questions if I miss anything I'm sorry um but yeah you guys that is it for this video this one's pretty lengthy and y'all know I hate doing lengthy videos but I was talking too much probably so that's why it's this long but anyways I will see you guys next time look forward to my next video I don't know what it's gonna be but you know I'm I'm I'm, I'm being consistent with this weekly vlog thing so I'm gonna give y'all something but yeah just look forward to it Bye, guys.